Welcome to part 2 of episode 20 of Fawn's Commentaries of System Shock 2, everybody. Well, back to plan A. Since Rebecca and Tommy kind of crushed my dreams of ever attaining plan B. This part of the episode is mostly dedicated to ransacking crew quarters once more. I need to get my supplies before I do anything major. Showdown wants us to go to the bridge because there's an override card in for ops deck there, but I'm gonna take my sweet time. Just cause. As Shepard Reborn once commented when he first came on command deck, this place is somewhat similar to engineering. Just a whole lot more dangerous because of all the more powerful enemies that are around, especially the Cyber Assassins. God, I hate the Cyber Assassins. But before I go on anymore, here's a log by a new character that's introduced here, Norris. Paranoia has struck. Somebody has changed the access codes of the security station in the officers' quarters, and now we can't get the key to shuttle control. I think Myers is the likely suspect. All that guy thinks about is conspiracy theories and naked girls. I'm convinced that Norris is indeed a virgin. Complain all you want, but that is my conclusion. Now then, do you remember from the first part of this episode that log that we heard from Anatoly Kerenchkin? What I find interesting about that log is that it seems that the many, at one point or another, are going to end up repeating humanities and Shodan's mistakes at some point. They're a relatively young race who haven't really gone through much history, and being really communist in Tenity, I don't really expect them to le really learn many lessons throughout life, including creating a new life form with its own intelligence and such. Every race has the idea that it's superior to other races. That's pretty much been prevalent throughout humanity's history. Despite having a dramatically different mindset, it's clear that the many are on a date with destiny, just like Shodan is. Humanity is the oldest of the three parties involved here, and although we still fight over petty matters from time to time, we've had a long time to understand the shortcomings of certain systems, and nowadays we normally suffer from massive benefits that come from covert criminal activities like organized crime. Shodan and the Mini share the same weakness, pretty much. The two of them are relatively unexperienced. To bypass this, the Mini and Shodan seek to relinquish all differences in freedom, respectively. They tarnish everything humanity has been working hard for for the sake of ruling with an iron fist. You can call it communism or theoretical dictatorship, but it's all the same to me. But that's just my opinion on the whole thing. In the end, we're really just facing yet another bad guy that needs to be taken down. And in this case, I think it's more realistic that we created our own worst enemy. For the sake of power, that is. When you create your enemy, when you create something that's meant to benefit you in acquiring power over others for evil misdeeds, it often backfires. Thus, Shodan. And same thing that happened to Shodan when the mini was created. At this point in the game, it's a pretty dire moment for humanity, considering the fact that the Von Braun is the breaking point. If Shonan or the Mini gets a hold of the Von Braun, that's the end of humanity. I guess that leaves me to save them, huh? Anyhow, I picked up Myers' log from his locker. Should have the security station code, so let's have a listen real quick. Oh my god. The only guy in this entire ship so far that's had any reason. Any reasoning abilities whatsoever. Considering they had a crook as a captain, a narcissistic idiot for another captain, a paranoid crank for a security chief, and probably a bunch of idiots for scientists who came along for the ride, and of course the replicators selling semi-illegal drugs and anti-personal ammunition for the public, I really can't blame him. Just can't. And if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just grabbing some chemicals for later research. 
that I got all the room I need for all these chemicals, considering the fact that a Psy user isn't dependent on a lot of weapons. That's one of the main advantages to being a Psy user. You don't have to carry around a bunch of guns and ammunition. And as long as, as, long as you have a healthy supply of Psy points, you should be just fine. And also, if you saw that big crate in there, there's really no point at all in getting the hex skill for it. Although you do get better and more items than usual than the smaller security crates, I still don't think that the high cost of cyber modules required to get it is really worth it at all. Screw stairs and elevators! I take windows out! Now then, off to the bridge. Probably one of the most monumental moments in the entire game of System Shock 2. Because I believe that this is where Anatoly decided, let's go down to the surface of Tau City 5. The beginning of the end. Oh look, he's waving goodbye. Even though it's just one room, this room has some pretty high security. I also believe this is one of the this is the first place where you meet the um, new type of turret. It's more powerful than the laser and slug turrets that we've encountered so far. Or at least that's what I think it is. I mean, the laser turrets probably still hold a card over it. But a blast turret shoots rockets instead of lasers or slugs. So to us, it's a big threat. Likewise, to other enemies, it's also a big threat. Which means once I manage to hack this turret, I will be happy. Come on, there we go. Doesn't do as much damage as I hope, but it does fire much faster than the uh, laser turns do. Your skill surprises me. Although unlike the other turns, you can actually dodge the rockets. I don't think you can really dodge the lasers of laser turns unless you're like super fast. Other than that, blast turns have their uses. Here's a log by Diego, by the way. Most epic video game moment ever! Well, that's at least in my opinion. The voice actor for Diego was just awesome. That last line just has so much of Diego's epic characterization that I just feel so motivated right now to beat the crap out of Shodan and the many. I guess that was the intention, right? But this log capitalizes on his log that we found in episode 6 and that he's actually a very caring guy and that he truly feels guilty for everything that's happened his original intentions were for the discovery of the alien life form and possibly keeping Trioptimum from using it for their own misdeeds his image would be much more glorified but now he truly realizes the mistakes behind his reasoning and he's trying everything he can to remedy the situation I just hope he's still alive so we can team up with him. He sounds like a pretty badass dude. Anyhow guys, this is the end of episode 20. Look forward to episode 21, another two-parter. And if you wish, stick around for a preview. See you then.